got into speaking because uh, I just have a passion for being able to deliver messages to audiences that uh, help them. If you're watching this video now, uh, you've probably been looking through a few tapes on different speakers. And uh, when you look at any group, there's always going to be one person that's, um, that's somewhat different. And uh, you can probably tell when you get to this tape that I'm going to be that person. I worked my way up through a company when I was uh, just 19 years old and uh, was able to um, go from uh, being a lowly person in the company to uh, buying away a computer division. Um, that took about seven years. Uh, I took that company and turned it into about a $40 million operation. Scott Klosowski, entrepreneur, self-made man, highly sought after speaker, CEO of three successful international startup companies an innovative leader with a passion for making your organization better. Scott Klosowski is known around the world for shaking up the status quo when it comes to building teams and setting strategy for success. He shares stories and experiences that he learned in the trenches as he brought his startup companies through good and hard times and faced incredible adversity. He delivers fresh observations, ideas and practical steps that his clients can use immediately. Scott Klosowski giving your organization the future point of view. I have the uh, classic kind of entrepreneurial background and I've learned an awful lot of lessons along the way. Uh, I've had uh, millions and millions of dollars that have been invested in me by investors. When you ask investors uh, what's unique and different about me, they would tell you, first of all, I've got really good over the horizon vision. Second of all, I'm very good at assembling teams. Um, third, I'm very good at building cultures that allow people to uh, succeed within those teams. Uh, so I, I've, not, uh, I've not built my career as a scholarly exercise. Um, I've built my career on actually going out and doing things, building companies, putting together the teams of people that were successful, oftentimes with very leading edge technologies that people hadn't, uh, hadn't heard much about. I built a company called webcast.com. At webcast in the late 90s, we had some of the best technology for creating kind of interactive television over the web. So the premier thing that could be done in the world at that time was to webcast the WWF WrestleMania. Anybody heard of it here? Yeah, okay. I, some of you won't admit it, but uh, I have to say I still watch it to this day. So uh, we get this call from, uh, from the WWF. They'd seen us at a trade show, and they said, hey, we'd like to know if you guys could uh, webcast WrestleMania for us. Shane McMahon... Uh, flies out to see us and comes in with uh, the head of their IT department and says, all right, look, we need to know if you have a pay-per-view system that could handle um, you know, signing up like 10,000 people the day of the event. And here's, here's how many hours ahead we think they'll sign up, basically gave it to us. And can you handle 10,000 simultaneous streams? So I have a room full of our developers, and the head developer says, yeah, yeah, we can do it. He gets up to the board. He starts drawing all this kind of stuff. Yeah, he's doing all this math. No problem. We can handle it. We can do that pay-per-view for you. So Shane says, great, you're hired, and he goes off. Now, I'd not heard that our pay-per-view system could do that. So when he left, I asked our head of IT, when was it that our, uh, our pay-per-view got that strong? And he said, I don't know. I just made all that stuff up in there. I said, you've got to be kidding me. And he said, no, no, but I really, seriously, I think, you know, we got enough time. we got like six weeks. We'll have it together. Don't worry, boss. Don't worry. So I'm on my way to go meet with, you know, the McMahons and the head of IT. So I'm on the phone back to the office. And I'm like, oh, well, what's going on? And, it, and this is, I'll never forget as long as I live. Brad Thomas at my office says to me, Scott, we are slamming one U servers into the racks as fast as we can, and we can't hold it any longer. What do you mean you can't hold it any longer? He said, they're coming in too fast. It's breaking down. It's we, we can't get them registered. And so finally the head of IT looks over at me and he says, just go ahead and turn it off and let them in. I mean, if we can't register them for the event, then we're not going to block them all and get a bad reputation. Just turn it off. We'll just let everybody see it online and uh, we'll just lose the money. We, we will just lose the money. You notice he said we, not the royal we. We were all going to lose money. So then he looks at me, and I'll never forget this as long as I live. He looks at me and he says, Scott, this was a complete and utter failure. Uh, I, as long as I live, I will never forget his face saying that to me. So that's what happens when you don't do magic things. 
Okay, now what, what I could have told you was the head of IT that told me um, that he could get that pay-per-view done, he was working in an office in Phoenix. The rest of the developers were in Oklahoma City. The two groups didn't work very well together. They were fighting over what the strategy should be about how to do the pay-per-view. They didn't agree on how the code should be set up. And so they argued for six weeks over how it should get done. At the end of the day, it was embarrassing failure of collaboration. So I've seen both sides. That's how much you impact a company. I mean, that's what you can do just in who you are, just how you show up and the quality work that you do. Scott Klosowski's outstanding presentation content includes entrepreneurship, applying the existing entrepreneurial talents suppressed within large organizations, cultural evolution, synchronizing corporate cultures with team members in order to generate rapid results, visionary technology application, the digital tools that are inundating us and their skillful application can generate outstanding results if applied early and strategically. He customizes each presentation for every group, weaving your needs and the story of your industry into a conversation that produces real results. Scott Klosowski, The Future Point of View. After about four or five years of building companies, I started getting asked to, uh, to speak to groups where people said, hey, could you uh, talk to us about how to be entrepreneurial? Uh, could you talk to us about uh, how to build teams and how to put together a culture that uh, becomes successful? And so uh, I, would speak to, uh, I would speak to groups and uh, people would uh, really be energized at the end and uh, they would stop me afterwards and say, you know, I never thought of that or uh, I really like the way that you, uh, you approach building that culture. Uh, you know, I always understood how important being an entrepreneur was, but uh, I didn't understand how those skills could play in a large company. Uh, so I thought, you know, uh, it, it would be nice to be able to touch bigger and wider audiences. And that's what uh, led me to actually become a speaker in the first place. Audiences want to be touched somehow. They want to feel something. They don't want to just sit back in their chairs and, uh, and just listen to content that gets thrown at them and see 30 slides where they walk away and there's really nothing they can take home and use. Uh, audiences, they want to feel. And so I learned that uh, you had to have the right combination of content, uh, the right com combination of showmanship, um, and certainly a high amount of ideas. Uh, I believe if you can have an audience walk away with three powerful ideas that they can use, you've given them something of value. Um, they'll appreciate that they sat and that they listened to you talk. So for me, personally, and if i got to go assemble a team, it, it's really developers first. I mean, if you don't have the people that can build the products and can, can do the magic things, marketing is going to have nothing to market. Now, there's always a big debate uh, you know, in companies about, well, gee, is it more important to have people that can sell the product or people that can generate the product? That's always the interesting discussion you know, up at the sea levels. What's more valuable, a really good salesperson or a really good developer? Because a developer could do a wonderful product, but if nobody sells it, okay, we make no money. True. Okay? But if a developer doesn't develop any good product, doesn't matter how good of a salesperson you are, we make no money. So they're at least equally as important. You know, I, I say this just so that you take seriously your role in the operation and what you bring to it. I think a lot of times developers, they love to develop. They love to be creative. They love to be artists. They like to code. They like to do eloquent code. I mean, they like to make things work, that you know, we're logical you know, as developers. Okay? But sometimes we lose the context of what we're really doing. We don't understand how what we're doing impacts the rest of the organization. Klosowski provides exciting and memorable keynotes, breakouts, and other programs where he works with clients to make significant changes in how they organize and build teams. He leads his audiences to see highly profitable and successful business management from a new and future point of view. And what I found was uh, clients would, um, would hire me again and again because uh, I could speak across two or three different subjects that would be valuable to them. Uh, and then they started asking me if I could tailor uh, my talks. They said, you know, we're from a specific industry. Could you tell us how in our industry uh, entrepreneurism might help or in our industry how technology might affect the future? And so I, I learned to start uh, customizing my speeches. So before every time I would talk to an audience, I would study the industry trade magazines. 
Um, I would talk to three or four different people at different places in the supply chain in the industry. And I would find out what their problems were and what their concerns were, found out what their ideas were about where things might go in the future. You know, nobody wants me to get up there and give a, a canned speech. You know, first of all, it's obvious that it's canned. Second of all, it's, it's not often something that's going to touch the audience. Uh, so I began completely customizing every talk uh, just for that audience. Uh, and sure enough, I started having lines of people afterwards that would come up and want to uh, discuss some of the ideas that I'd thrown out. There were times when the ideas might shock people, where I might talk about the, that certain pieces of the industry were going to go away. Certain pieces of the industry wouldn't be as powerful as they were today. Um, and, and then I would have interesting debates with people after the talks. Uh, but one thing that I found out for sure is uh, you can absolutely touch an audience and make them feel something. If you can share with them powerful ideas, if you can share with them some over-the-horizon vision about where things might go, and if you're not afraid to take a stand, if you're not afraid to have a viewpoint about uh, where things go, and you're intelligent about how you apply it. You know, do you have good relationships across all teams? All teams mean sales, marketing, research, you know, the executive staff. I mean, have you built relationships across the whole team? so that you understand where other people are coming from, so that you can reach out to other people for knowledge or opinions or ideas if you need to? Or are you kind of sheltered in your own little world and you go into a dark cubicle and that's it, your whole world is like uh, 10 by 10, and uh, to go out of that might be you know, something that's against your rules? I mean, do you have good relationships all the way around? Because it's not hard to get them. And if nothing else, just for the perspective, it would be good. Scott's new book provides a rare insight into how to release the entrepreneurial spirit within team members, increase profitability through employee buy-in, and build the bottom line through an innovative and excellent corporate culture. When you hire Scott Plotowski to speak to your group, he brings several decades of hands-on business experience at the highest levels of an organization, combined with the ability to provide riveting new concepts targeted specifically to your industry with maximum results. Scott Klosowski, the future point of view. Uh, when we talk about building culture, society has changed tremendously about how people go to work and what they expect at work. Uh, but a lot of companies are still very old school with how they approach things. Um, they're not matching the, the processes that they use in the company with the way people want to work. Uh, and so some of the ideas that I have that I throw out um, seem to be, uh, you know, very cutting edge to people and uh, and you know they might want to debate you know it, 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 would that really work you know should we really allow uh, employees to have that level of freedom or that lack of transparency in the company um, you know for me I found by doing it that it's successful uh, all the lessons that I've learned and the ideas that I share uh, they're things that I applied there are things that help make me successful there are things that help me build three companies and sell them for a lot of money uh, so these are not things that I'm just guessing at. These are things that I've done with my own hands, um, you know, that I've felt with my own heart, uh, and that I've been able to get out to um, a, a culture of employees and have them work successfully. You can never be great, and you can never create magic things unless you know they're unless everybody works as a team, unless everybody ha is aligned, going in the same direction, and everybody's pulling their weight. I know mean, it sounds simple. But you know it's funny when when you when you're when you do consulting and you go and you see lots of different companies, it's the simple things that are broken. You know, it, I don't go into companies and there's some very odd strain of virus in the company that's making it perform badly. I go in and it's teams that are dysfunctional. The end. The end. It's that simple. And you know the fix is just how do you get everybody aligned and rowing in the same direction and rowing hard. I'm sure as you go through and you look at uh, more tapes um, and you're making a decision about who uh, you'd like to speak in your organization, uh, you've got some framework that you're thinking about. Uh, and I'm sure you're thinking about, you know, who, who can we get that um, would be meaningful? Who, who can we get that would uh, help an audience see things in a different way? Um, who can we get that afterwards people would come up and say, wow, where did you get this person? Uh, they were really, really good. Um, I can tell you that I have that effect on audiences, and I'm comfortable that uh, uh, this is something that I could do for you. For more information about Scott Klosowski and developing your own future point of view, contact the provider of this video.